Thanks, Nat. So I will be doing the next part of the presentation, and that is um, how teachers need to make their to modify their lesson plans for their students because we can have students from all over the world with different learning disabilities for example hearing impairments you can have emotional problems attention de this deficiency disorder and they can also be gifted so it's up to us to um, understand our students learning needs and learning strengths so that they can retain the knowledge that we are teaching them but also not just use it in the classroom but use it out in the real world and like teach their parents as well like oh mom i learned this today and also let the parents know that their children are progressing and that we as teachers care about them because of course universal design we're we're making sure our lessons are pertaining to each individual student in our classroom. So everyone's learning. Um, the types of uh, learning disabilities that I decided to put within the presentation is for one, um, uh, dysgraphia. And I just, a few of these I just learned about to when when not today but when we did the project um a dysgraphia is a learning disability that affects a person's handwriting ability and excellent motor skills so poor poor spatial planning on paper poor spelling and difficulty composing writing i did not know this was one of the learning disabilities and i i always thought this was like you know okay maybe the child isn't ready to learn how to write yet or they just have bad handwriting because that's what I always thought but students do have a hard time writing and thinking at the same time so dysgraphia I thought for the classroom activities modification would be provide paper assignments with their name date title and any other stuff that is filled out for them. That way they get to practice it. And once they see, okay, this is how I should have my paper filled out. Then the, another activity without the paper being filled out or say they're doing a project at home, they know how that, how uh, the title, the date and everything should be filled out in a certain order because as teacher, you provided it for that student. Another thing I thought is to use a scribe or speech to text so the student can detect uh, test answers and writing assignments um, and allow proof readers to look for errors. And I always thought with the proof readers, it would be like, a, um, I forget what it's called, but... It, it's like when someone, when you get a buddy to um, look over your your uh, essays and stuff. I for, I know it's on the tip of my tongue, but per, that's how I thought of proofreaders as. Um, pencil grips are great for keeping the pencil um, held a certain way. Um, providing information that is needed to start writing assignments early. Uh, provide handouts so there's less to copy from the board and I also love that idea because most students get you know their attention will go a different way especially kids with ADHD which is the next topic I will be going to but you know that's a lot of writing for a student especially high school oh students want to be doing something fun fun activities not always sitting in their desk writing so these are ideas that can help out modifying your classroom with a student that has a, a dysgraphia disability. And a classroom lesson that I came up with was um, the, the uh, alternative handwriting method, which is handwriting without tears. This is actually a website and I'm happy I found this. And handwriting without tears basically gives you a whole bunch of lesson plans for the students uh, to 
to use and maybe take home and practice on. Like you, you can allow students to use different cursive handwriting. They can use certain fonts that fits how how they write. Um, and it helps students practice and feel comfortable with their handwriting and with allowing the teacher to help teach them and not feel, oh, my handwriting is bad, this is ugly, I don't, like the teacher can't see what I'm trying to put on paper. So I love this site, Handwriting Without Tears. That was awesome. Another uh, learning disability is processing deficiency. Processing, processing deficiencies is when a student have trouble making sense of data and it can make it hard for the student to perform a classroom in a classroom without a instructional support. So for example, auditory or visual are auditory and visual are processing deficiencies. Uh, they can make it hard for students to distinguish and remember important information in a classroom for them to succeed. And the one that I picked was auditory processing deficiency. And it makes it hard for the students to process and make meaning of sounds. That can make it hard to learn, learn and from focusing on what the teacher says is trying to say. Um, so for instance, a modification that I would use in my classroom would be nonverbal signals. And I truly do love this idea because you, the students will be able to hold up signs or um, they have a little tablet that they can press on the button, press on the tablet and um, say, oh, I don't understand something or can you repeat that? Or uh, just, you know, if they didn't get what the teacher was saying because maybe it's too loud in the classroom then they can have that little tablet or that little hand signal saying hey i don't understand um giving more material on a new concept to the student before it's taught to the whole class uh so have that student look over um write down some questions get them familiar with it before you start a whole new subject that way once you start to teach the whole subject that student is able to be like okay i have these questions i know the answer to that um just have them more prepared uh, another uh disability i also have it's not related to reading but i have found certain uh facts that it can relate to like word problems so that's basically reading uh dyscalculia <laughs> and that is a learning di disability that affects a person's understanding of numbers and learning math facts uh this is this also as i said it's not an ela subject but it does get into the fact that students have this uh learning disability and they do have poor comprehension of math symbols and struggle with telling time word problems and counting so that's why i put this in here and i didn't put any um modifications because of course it's math so but I feel like this is also one another thing that I learned because I I didn't know oh wow some some students have these such and such learning disabilities and I feel like us as teachers should all know and be aware of these learning disabilities that way we're able to modify our classroom we're able to modify the environment so that they feel comfortable where they can be themselves where they know okay this teacher really wants to help me learn and progress in my learning so i feel okay with with how even though i have a learning disability i feel okay with that i don't feel scared or I don't feel 
just made fun of. And most students do feel made fun of when they have a learning disability. For example, my learning disability when I was growing up was uh, speech. I, certain words, even now that I'm older, certain words I still can't say. Because when I was younger, before I started school, I couldn't move my mouth. I had to go to therapy, like all kinds of therapy where they would have to hold certain parts of my mouth for me to form words and I had to do mouth exercises with my mom. So you never know what students are going through when they have learning disabilities and even before they start school, the, the parents and doctors have to prepare that student, get them ready for when they do start school. And there's also a lot of paperwork for the teachers to read and to know like, okay, this student has this and this and that. So I need to prepare my lessons, not just for my my other students, but also for this student that's in my class and for this student that may have this disability. And you never know what all students will have and you never know which disability you will have in your class. It's just, it's very important to just stay prepared. Always stay prepared for whatever comes your way as a teacher. And one other thing is to just be there for them. Just be there for them. And one last thing that I, a disability that I know we all see and hear about every time is ADHD. Um, it's a, we know it's a disability of not being able to focus and pay attention. But a, a project that I saw, which was so cool, is called a portfolio showcase. And it's a portfolio that shows progress and improvement over a period of time, which would be from like the beginning of the school year to the end. And you could get the kids to do it either online or like have them create their own hardback portfolio. I would rather do it like hardback instead of online. Well, or, or you could do a hardback first and then that way they could take it home and then put it online for like parent night they they're able to show the te the parents and their family and friends like this is my talent this is what makes me who I am as a person it is basically an about me portfolio showcase and i truly love that and for the modifications you should uh alternate seats for activities with uh seated activities for like uh, physical activities, uh, displaying important information where the student can easily see it, uh, using a timer to set limits. So just keeping up with time, making sure that there are breaks here and there, making sure that the class is constantly moving. Uh, so like stations would be a good one for children with ADHD. Uh, and that is why I put the showcase portfolio because you're moving, you're drawing, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're, you're putting pictures in there. So that is a good way for a student with ADHD to stay focused. Uh, awesome project. And now you will have Killian to finish up this project for you.